Hi, my name is Jose Berardo Cunha and this video is part of the series about mobile development architecture. In this video, I'm continuing talking about web native apps. Again, I recommend you to have a look at all the previous videos. In the very last one, we start talking about web native apps and we made a demo using React Native. Now it's time to have a look at native script. Well, in the last video, we introduced this 30 quadrant about web native where you have your JavaScript code communicating with all the platform, not only the web view, but actually all available widgets from the platform, but having this bridge. So let's have a look how this bridge works in native script. Before going there, as usual, I'd like to first show you the website about native script. So I recommend you to have a look at this website and go through the docs to start your own app using native script. Okay, so how it works on Android. You have your JavaScript code at the top. You have your application code. Eventually, you're gonna use some plugins, some third-part modules, and something like that. But in here is an X-ray exactly in the bridge level. The native script bridge is actually the V8 VM for Android with a range of different tools to make this communication happen. As you can see, it uses JNI, which is Java Network Interface, to communicate with an Android native system. And also it's important to notice that it has a Chrome DevTools. So although you are using native components, it's possible to debug your running app using Chrome as it was a completely web app. Pretty much the same thing happens for iOS. You have your code at the top and below this part you have JavaScript Core VM. So the heart of native script bridge for iOS is the JavaScript Core, which is another implementation of JavaScript outside the browser. And as you can see for iOS, you can use Chrome DevTools as well as Safari Web Inspector. And the communication is facilitated because for iOS, the native implementation is in the same bytecode sequence as the bridge itself. So differently from Android, which you have your bridge written in C++, having to talk to a native implementation, which is actually not necessarily 100% of the case native. It can be running on top of a Java virtual machine. So let's have a look at some examples using native script. First things first, let's open a terminal window to run our commands. Native script, as well as React Native and all other web-based solutions, you install using npm. So if you want to have the native script CLI, you should run this command, npm install or npm i and then dash g just to be global and then you define native script. That's okay, I'm not gonna run this command because I have native script installed already. Once you install native script, you have two commands. One is native script itself and another one is TNS. That stands for Telerik Native Script. So let's use TNS, it's easier to type. TNS, create, and then I define my project name. In this case, let me call it native script WhatsApp demo. Why I choose this name, I'll show you in a second. So after you define your project name, you can define, you don't have to, but you can define a different template for your project. If you don't define anything, you have a default one. But if you type dash dash template, and then you put equals, and you define a template name, let's go ahead and type native script WhatsApp template. What is this name? This is basically an NPM package. So what native script does is it goes to npm and then download what you have in this project. If you define an npm package that is not actually a native script template, at least one directory, at least the basic stuff, will be created by the time you create your project. That's exactly the case. I create this template and I publish an npm and then you're gonna see the initial idea for this template. So I run this command and wait for it to download my template and also install everything. That's okay. This template is actually an Angular project. So let's go ahead and have a look at this content. I can just type code and define my project name, which is also a directory just created. So let me type native script WhatsApp demo, and then this will open in the Visual Studio code. Okay, so I have this open in Visual Studio code. That's the root folder for my project. And then you can see some directories created here. The most important one is exactly this directory called app. But before I open this app folder here, I'd just like to mention these platforms as well. These platforms is the directory that when you build your project, you create a platform for Android and also another platform for iOS. So let's open this app folder. And then you can see many files, but don't worry about those files because it depends on the template that you use. As I'm running from a template that has a lot of things already created, you can see a bunch of files here. But the most important directory for this moment is this app resource. 
I've been comparing many different frameworks and solutions for mobile development. I've been showing how they deal with the native platform. Specifically for native script, there is this directory created here. Even if you use a template that doesn't have this app resource inside it, the create command will always create this directory, at least with some basic stuff. So inside this app resource, we have Android and iOS. They are the directories that you can change some stuff. This platforms outside is the directory that has the compiled version of your project, but in here is the original version. So everything you can use to change the configurations for your project you must define inside those directories. So you have Android with some directories, in this case about troubles or some values. As you have in a normal Android project, it's a little bit different. We have this app.grader, which is actually the build.grader inside the app directory in a new Android project. You also have this Android manifest, which is the main definitions file. The same happens to iOS. There is a storyboard here, which is called launch screen storyboard. That's the storyboard for the launch screen. But you don't have the storyboard for your content because you are creating your content using native script. You can also save something inside this assets.exe assets, which is the main directory that you that you save some files like icons and images. And yeah, those directories are used for particular stuff that you want to save for Android or iOS. Let me go ahead and give it a spin. I'll open this terminal command inside the Visual Studio Code, and then I'm gonna run this TNS run, in this case, Android just because I have the Android emulator on the right side. This might also take some time because it's going to build everything and then run into the emulator. Now it's opening and yeah, now you can see my WhatsApp template. So it's just a dumb list, but just to show how powerful is native script in order to create native apps. I can click anywhere to show the content as well. And then you can see here some random fake messages being sent. And yeah, that's okay, it's good, but actually instead of being a very simple starting project, I decided to create using another template, which has a lot of things already created. I'd like to now, instead of presenting the content of this project, I'd like to create a new one, but this time will be a very basic one. And I'll take the opportunity to, instead of running this in a command line, which is just a matter of removing the dash dash template equals to whatever, I'd like now to use a very handy assistant which is NativeScript Sidekick. If you wanna know how to install NativeScript Sidekick, just head over to the docs and see how you can download it from the official website. There are options for Linux, Windows, and Mac OS. At the moment, I already have this installed, so I just, I'll just open the spotlight to run the command NativeScript Sidekick. This will present a loading screen, and then this will show up the first screen of a tool to help you start and also run your project using NativeScript. I'm not gonna see all the options here, just the basics to start a new project. So for now, I can hit create here or close this initial screen to have a look at the main screen before you create any project. So in here, I'm gonna go ahead and click in this create button. The main focus for the sidekick is one, help you to create your project, show you a number of initial templates so you can just pick whatever you prefer. And it also helps you to build and run your project. It is not an editor. You're not going to edit your whole project inside the native script sidekick. What you're gonna do is just create the project and then once you have your project ready to run on any device or emulator, you can use the sidekick to run as well. You can see in the left side, there's a select box where you can define if you're gonna use Angular and TypeScript, only JavaScript and also only TypeScript. Let me just define TypeScript. I don't want to have anything special for any particular framework, but also I wouldn't like to just go with JavaScript. Let me use something more exciting. For every option I've defined in the top, you have a number of different templates, which starts from the very basic one, and then you can see some other ones. For example, drawer navigation, tab navigation, master detail, and you can also preview it on iOS and also on Android. Let's go back to the blank template, which is the very basic one. Define the app name, I'll define native script, TypeScript demo. And then let's go ahead and click create. You can see at the bottom what's going on. You can open this output to see what's happening behind the scenes. Yeah, the project was created. Let me fold this area for a while. Now on the left side, you have a menu which separates a number of different configurations. You have these general configurations that of course you use for both iOS or Android or you can go specific to iOS or specific to Android. If you remember that directory for each platform, you can see that pretty much what you have here is just a visual in a more organized way to, to change one of those configuration files. 
for example, here for Android, you have a number of different permissions. Those are the same permissions you can define directly in your Android manifest. There is also an assets folder, which you can define for Android or iOS, which is pretty much where you save, where you store your main assets, like images, like icons, something like that. You can also click here to define some plugins. I'd like to install one plugin. For example, there is one that I created and I'll show you at the end of this video because of some particularity I think that's interesting to show. For example, if you go to available plugins and define something like energy shadow, it is possible to install this plugin. I'm not going to install this one because this is for an Angular project. So yeah, in order to run the project, you can come here in this run button and then you can build only build the project and also build and run on a device. Let's go ahead and click on the second one, run on device. To run on device, it detects the device that you have attached to your computer at the moment. I just have this emulator running for now. So that's why it's just showing this emulator. If I had an iOS simulator or any device attached to my computer, those will show up here as well. There is something very interesting for the sidekick. It's the way you build your project. As you can see, you can build your project here in a local build, which is the default one. But you can also click here to build your app in the cloud. This allows you to run the sidekick on Linux or Windows, and you can also target an iOS device. If you define this cloud build, that will be possible to run on iOS, although you are not running the sidekick on macOS. So I'm not going to use this for now. You can always have a look at the documentation to see how it works. But let me define this as a local build. In the right side, you have two options for debug or release. The debug version is the largest version, but it's better for you while you are developing. And the release version is the final version, which has smaller bundles. Let's leave it as it is and then click here and run on device. Let me have a look what we have inside our device. Again, as I run before for React Native, as well as Cordova in our basic native Android project. Let me click here on the tools and open the layout inspector. In the layout inspector can see different services running. Let me select this native scripted WhatsApp demo. This will show what exactly I have in the emulator. As you can see, that's exactly what I have on the right side. And let's go ahead and have a look what exactly we have inside this layout. I can see there is a linear layout. Inside this linear layout, there is a content view, which is a frame layout and so many other things. I can see grid layout and then you can have many other options as tab layout because we have many different tabs on the top. And then you can see the number of different things as this stack layout and this text view. And yeah, there are a number of different native components appearing here. And then you can see it's slightly different from React Native because in React Native, although we have native components, we are not only using the web view, which is the case for Cordova. Remember Cordova, we have only the web view in here. There's only one single component. In React Native, we have different components, different native components, but those components are actually wrapped inside the React Native stuff. So this component here is a React root view. This one's a React view group. And then you can see all of the components it start from React, which means that they are actually instance of another class, not directly the text view, but it's pretty much the same thing. This change has nothing to do with the performance when the, your app is running, but actually this change affects the life cycle of the React project itself. Once a new component, a new thing goes out from Android or iOS, if you use React Native, you have to wait until, until someone creates a plugin, a wrapper around this new component for you to use it. For native script, you don't have to wait for this. Also, that's exactly what leads me to show you what I created in the very first demo. When you create the first demo, I remember I copied and pasted a few lines of code just to create some shadows in a different way from iOS and also Android. This is actually a plugin that I'm using in my template. I also create this plugin. And what this plugin does is exactly run those lines for Android and iOS in order to have some shadow. And actually you can define as a user of the plugin, you can define what's the shadow you want. You can define some configurations and then it calls this file here to run the commands. So specifically, I'd like to show this apply on Android, which is pretty much what you create. If you go back to our second video of the series, you can see I was running something like shape, set color, set corner radius. In resume, I was running some commands specific to Android. And also I was running commands specific for iOS, like this layer, mask to bounds, 
show color or shadow offset and something around this. If you notice, all of these objects and these commands are available for you directly. Although this is a JavaScript, actually a TypeScript code, you can access all the native objects directly. So the native script bridge does this translation between your JavaScript code and actually the native environment. It marshals your parameters and you can call directly. Like for example, this CG size make, this is an objective C function that you can call directly in your iOS code. The same happens to Android, for example, in this object animator and many other stuff that you can see here. So yeah, that leads to the end of this video, in particular to the end of this tier where we discuss web native apps. We present in the last video React Native and this one Native Script. Of course, it's possible to have other options that might fit in this category. But in the next one, we are going to discuss one step below, which is cross-compiled apps. So see you in the next video.